In a world where most ancient forests were erased by ice or drought, the core of Appalachia still harbors more than 100 native tree species and over 10,000 life forms, all thriving together as if the last 20,000 years never swept them away. This is not a story of isolated survivors, but of entire living systems that kept functioning while almost everywhere else they broke down. How did this region escape the fate that reset so much of life on Earth? The answer still puzzles even scientists and may change how we think about the deep roots of nature itself. The numbers alone can be difficult to grasp. In the heart of the Appalachian region, Great Smoky Mountains National Park supports more than 100 native tree species, more than any other temperate forest in North America. Scientists have cataloged more than 10,000 distinct forms of life here, from towering tulip poplars to tiny mosses and fungi. Each plays a role in a web that stretches back thousands of years. This is living diversity. Across the wider Appalachian and Blue Ridge region, the count rises even higher, around 158 tree taxa, a level of diversity that rivals entire continents. These are not isolated oddities or scattered remnants. They are full communities, still functioning, still exchanging nutrients, still supporting rare salamanders, wildflowers, and soil networks that have coexisted for millennia. This is ecological continuity. In a single cove or slope, it is possible to find 30 or more tree species growing together, their roots and branches interwoven above layers of rich, organic soil. This kind of biological abundance is rare anywhere on Earth, and almost unheard of in regions that faced glacial scouring or repeated drought. Here, the tally is not just a number. It is proof that an entire living system has persisted. The scale of intact life in Appalachia stands as a quiet counterpoint to the story of loss told in so many other forests. A walk beneath the Appalachian canopy reveals a forest built on layers of time. Tall tulip poplars and hemlocks stretch overhead, but the story runs deeper than height. Here, the forest is stacked, multiple stories of life, each supporting the next. Shrubs and saplings fill the mid-levels, while a rich ground layer of mosses, ferns, and wildflowers carpets the soil. This vertical complexity is a living archive, shaped not by a single event, but by uninterrupted centuries of growth, death, and renewal. Many of these species trace their roots to the Arcto-Tertiary Geoflora, a lineage that once spread across the northern hemisphere. In most places, ice ages or arid spells erased these ancient forests, breaking them into scattered fragments or wiping them out entirely. But in Appalachia, entire lineages survive together. Oaks, maples, beech, and hemlock still share the same slopes, just as they did tens of thousands of years ago. The system is not just a collection of survivors, it is a community that has remained intact, with each layer and species still connected to the others. This kind of continuity is rare. In other regions, even if some species returned after a disturbance, the original structure and relationships were lost. Here, the network held. The same soils, the same fungal webs, the same partnerships between plants and animals, these persisted quietly through every climate swing. The puzzle is not how many species remain, but how these full systems are still present layered and whole in the heart of Appalachia.
The map of the last ice age draws a clear boundary, the Laurentide Ice Sheet, a wall of ice thousands of feet thick, stopped short of the central and southern Appalachians. North of the Ohio River, ice scoured the land down to bare rock, stripping away forests and soils. But across most of the Blue Ridge and the Smoky Mountains, the glaciers never arrived. Here, the hills and valleys remained untouched by that continental reset. In a laboratory, a sediment core taken from a quiet Appalachian lake tells the story in layers. Each band of mud and pollen records what grew above year after year. Where glaciated regions show abrupt breaks with mineral debris followed by a sudden return of pioneer plants, Appalachian cores reveal something different. Oak, hemlock, and beech pollen appear continuously, even through the coldest millennia. The forest shifted its composition as the climate changed, but the system itself was never erased. Paleoecologists describe these cores as evidence of unbroken ecological memory. They report that Appalachian pollen records show temperate trees persisting through the last glacial maximum, and that the continuity is unmistakable. This is not a refuge for a handful of species, but proof that entire communities survived in place, buffered from the scouring forces that reset the rest of the continent. Steep ridges and deep coves shape a hidden geography across the Appalachian Mountains. In these tightly folded landscapes, temperature and moisture can shift dramatically over just a few hundred meters. North-facing slopes linger in shadow, holding cool air and dampness long after the sun has moved on. Valleys cradle pockets of humidity, while ridge crests dry quickly after rain. For plants and animals, these gradients are more than a backdrop. They are lifelines. When the broader climate grew colder or drier, species did not vanish from the region. Instead, they tracked suitable conditions by moving short distances within the same mountain system. A tree species might retreat into a sheltered cove, while salamanders shifted from exposed slopes into mossy hollows. Microclimate loggers in these coves record narrow temperature swings and high humidity, even as conditions outside fluctuate. Genetic studies of lungless salamanders reveal distinct lineages confined to single ridges or valleys, some separated by just a few kilometers, yet isolated for tens of thousands of years. These patterns show that in Appalachia, survival was a matter of movement within the maze, not escape from it. The result is a living archive of local adaptation, where the lines between past and present are blurred by the quiet persistence of life in place. Beneath the dense canopy and layered understory, the real foundation of Appalachian continuity lies out of sight. Here, soils run deep, often revealing distinct O, A, and B horizons that have built up over thousands of years. In these undisturbed coves and slopes, organic matter accumulates in thick mats, shading a world of roots, mycorrhizal fungi, and countless microbes. Soil monoliths taken from reference sites like Coita Hydrologic Laboratory show uninterrupted stratification with carbon-rich layers extending well below the surface. This structure is not just a relic of age, but a record of stability. Each horizon marks centuries of leaf fall, slow decomposition, and nutrient exchange, unbroken by catastrophic erosion or compaction. Hydrologists tracking base flow in these watersheds find steady, year-round moisture, fed by high rainfall 
and filtered through these layered soils. Springs and seeps persist even in dry spells, supporting lush ground flora and keeping microbial communities active. Water moves slowly through the system, and that steady movement matters. A soil scientist puts it simply, when the soil profile stays intact, everything else can follow. The roots, the fungi, and the water keep the system running year after year. This below-ground web acts as the living infrastructure of the forest, preserving nutrient cycles and buffering change. Where soils and water systems never broke, the entire ecosystem avoided the kind of reset that erased ancient forests elsewhere. That continued integrity is why these forests still carry living systems that should not, by all other histories, still be here. A cross-section of a fallen hemlock in Albright Grove reveals rings that begin in 1654. Each narrow band traces a year of steady growth, layered through centuries of storms, mild winters, and cool, wet summers. In Joyce Kilmer Memorial Forest, another hemlock's rings start in 1682, their pattern matching master chronologies that reach back well before European settlement. Dendrochronologists use these patterns not just to count years, but to confirm the forest's uninterrupted story. At Burnwood in New River Gorge, a black gum tree rooted itself in 1671 and has grown ever since, its wood recording every drought and rainy season. These ages are not outliers. In old growth coves and hollows across the Appalachians, living trees with origins in the 17th century are common, their rings overlapping and interlocking to form a living timeline. The continuity in these rings is quiet proof. No clear cut, no stand replacing fire, no full reset. Only centuries of unbroken life. In the heart of Appalachia, the forest acts as a living reference point, a biological time bridge that links the ancient past to the present. Here, rare combinations of trees, understory plants, fungi, and animals coexist in patterns that no longer exist elsewhere. These are not just survivors from an earlier era, but entire communities that have persisted together, providing scientists with a baseline for what temperate forests once looked like before widespread disturbance. In a single cove, Researchers can study mixed mesophytic stands where 30 or more tree species share space with a dense understory, mosses, and salamanders, assemblages now absent from most of North America. The value of these forests goes beyond their age. They serve as benchmarks for ecological research revealing how intact systems function over centuries. Nowhere else can such original networks be observed, running more or less uninterrupted since the last Ice Age. Appalachia stands as a rare archive, its continuity offering a glimpse into the workings of ancient living systems. Today, Appalachia stands as a living archive its forests holding patterns and partnerships that vanished elsewhere. In a world of accelerating change, these unbroken systems show what continuity really means. The future may reshape the land, but for now, the story of persistence still unfolds beneath these ancient canopies.